Hi, I'm Bob Zamorino, and this is my co-host. Emily Seitz. And welcome to Taste It Missoula. Emily, we're going to start right off with putting on the table seven things you think are essential for a kitchen. All right, let's go. Number one, you got to have a good knife. First and foremost, that's your number one. Your number one, too? Yep. Tell me about your knife. So my knife is a Santoku knife, and it's a Japanese knife, and I like it because my hands are small. Right. And for me, I mean, I love chef knives, but it's just, just easier for me to chef maneuver knife. and handle. It's quick. It's easy. And these little um, ridges actually help if I'm chopping something, I'd like it how it feels in my hand. That's what's important. You gotta figure out what knife works for you. Did you know that the ridge design in this knife is to keep food from sticking to the blade? I did. Very I good. Know All right, number two. Number two for me is I really like to have a nice cutting board. For me, a cutting board that I can put in the dishwasher. Because so often, you know, you have this cutting board that you designate just for proteins and then you're you're, you're like, which one did I choose to do for proteins again? But if you have one that you can just put in the dishwasher, it's clean, it's done. It's not going to be festering in your uh, And I go the other way with that. At some point, I will have a full set of cutting boards, but I usually use a green one for produce, a red one for red meats, a white one for chicken and fish. What if you're colorblind? Then I use all of them and put them in the dishwasher. Nice. There you go. Okay, number right. three. Number three. <laughs> um, I really like, uh, it's called a microplane. It's probably one of my favorite tools. I'm not a huge gadget person because I feel like you should learn your skills, but this is great. Um, you can grate with it for carrots, chocolate, cheese, and it's really pretty easy to clean. It's just a blade, and it's actually mo uh, kind of modeled after a lathe that you would have in a, a wood shop. Okay. The last time I was on a microplane, it was from Salt Lake to Missoula. <laughs> I actually prefer the larger version, which is the grater, and it has three different cutting surfaces, actually four different cutting surfaces, a fine grate, a smaller grate, a medium grate, and then a large grate. So for me... It makes it really great. It makes it great. It makes it great. Oh, very good. God, you're hurting me already. <laughs> All right, let's go. What do you okay, got? Okay, so I see you've got tongs. Tongs. I've got tongs. Spring-loaded. Spring-loaded has to be. Mostly metal of some sort. It's going to be better, obviously. If you're out at the grill and you're going to be grilling with plastic, I think that's pretty dumb. Um, right, especially well. if you're one of those people that tends to leave it on the grill or right, something and exactly. you come back and find it melted and then to it. You've got melted tongs. Right. Basically, your third pair of hands, right? Or second pair? What second pair. Second pair? Yeah, you don't. Second pair of hands. A pair indicates two, you've already oh, got that. Right, thanks, Bob. Okay, we're yeah. good. Next. Uh, okay, so we're on, a, we're on five. I love to have a juicer, it's great. Um, one of the things I feel like a lot of times with food at the very end when I'm tasting something and maybe just is missing just a little bit of bitterness or acid, I'm going to add some kind of citrus. And this is a great way to uh, juice without worrying about getting seeds in it. Okay, and I personally have hands and can squeeze, and so I tend to use that as uh, my juicer. And then if I have to something seedy, seeds? I go right through a small sieve. Oh, works. Very easy to go. My number five choice would be a whisk. Huh. I use this a whisk or a fork, but I actually tend to prefer a whisk over a fork. I use it more probably than anything Can else in the kitchen. A, and a metal whisk is going to be really nice. Metal whisk over always. A plastic again. Oh yeah, plastic, pretty weak, pretty lame. What do you got for number seven? Okay, number seven, or kind of like six and seven for me, I guess, would be about measuring. You're going to want to make sure that you've got a couple different kinds of measuring tools. Obviously, you'd want to start with your teaspoon, tablespoon. I really like to have metal. Again, it's easy to clean. You can just, it's going to last longer. You know, plastic, what, who knows what plastic does, right, in the future. Then, obviously, you've gonna, you're going to have either wet. It's great to have, again, glass, a Pyrex of some sort. And Pyrex is great because you can put it in the oven. Um, you don't have to worry about, I mean, obviously, you want to watch it in the oven. It's not going to explode. But it's going to uphold you know, in a microwave or as well. And then for dry ingredients, how cute is this? Little hearts. I mean, so cute. Um, yeah, but again, metal, easy to clean. It's going to last a while. So that, okay. those are mine. My number seven is spatulas. And I like a metal one for if I'm especially working a grill or I have to get underneath and move something from the bottom of a pan. And I have a rubber one 
that is uh, usable for any number of things, clearing a bowl or whatever, you know, whatever you have to, anytime you need to scrape something down like a batter or anything like that. The reason that I don't go with measuring things is because when I'm actually cooking, I rarely measure. I've been doing this for long enough that I rarely measure. So for me, it's not as important, but I also understand the importance of having that as part sure. of your kitchen supplies. The one that I hadn't mentioned yet, and I didn't hear you mention either, is we have three pans here, and I wanna show you these three pans because they each offer something different. What I like about this pan is, this is a 10 inch saute pan. If you normally get a 10 inch saute pan, they're fairly shallow. They're about half the depth of this. This is actually a little deeper so that if you're doing food for more than one or two people, you could actually probably use this to do it. Even though it's probably about the same volume as this, this is a non-stick surface. Some people prefer it, I don't, but some do. And then this is what I use mostly, and this is a, a bowl wok, you know, and it's got a double solid bottom. And that's the other thing that you wanna look at. Look at the depth of the bottom there because it helps you to not burn things when they're on an open flame. So I love this pan for that, but I also love it because it has volume. You can actually put a lot of food if you're doing a, stew, a soup or a sauce or a stew, it fits real well in that pan. We're gonna do a dish for you that you're truly gonna love. It's a baked chili relleno. And so we're gonna start with, Emily's gonna roast some Anaheim chilies for you. 